This is sushi at its finest in Little Tokyo. When you have meals like this, you know you're gonna have a good time. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Steve from Rockstar Eater coming to you with another rockin' episode. And I am out here in downtown Los Angeles in the historic Little Tokyo because I'm gonna be doing the ultimate Little Tokyo food tour today. Little Tokyo is one of the hottest tourist attractions that you'll find in Los Angeles and they got a lot of great restaurants with so many food spots to go to. You might be asking, what are some really great restaurants in Little Tokyo. Well, that's what I'm gonna help you with in today's episode. As I try some gyoza, I try some noodles, I try some sushi, and a lot of other great stuff. So stick all the way to the end of this video because this is one you don't wanna miss, especially if you love Japanese food as we go on a tour of Little Tokyo in Los Angeles. And also, if you're new to this channel, take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button, as well as the notification bell, because I post these food and travel videos weekly you don't want to miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now, and in the meantime, I'm going to be looking for the first restaurant. And if you guys are planning to come here by Metro, they did open up this new station that takes you right into Little Tokyo. This is so cool because it wasn't here before and they spent a long time building this thing. But yes, it will take you right up and pop you right out into Little Tokyo. So the first spot I'm gonna be heading to is across the street from me. It's called Marugami Manzo. This is one of the most acclaimed and popular noodle shops that you're gonna find in Little Tokyo. They specialize in handmade, housemade udon, and you don't really find too many of that in LA. So this is gonna be pretty rocking. This is the signature udon section. Oh man, you see there's so many that you can choose from. Their miso carbonara udon is a bestseller here. And look, they even have like Vongoli udon. So it's not just Japanese, Japanese. They have some international influences. Ooh, sea urchin udon, okay. Hot udon, yeah, so if you wanna go a little bit more traditional, if it's a, also a cold day, then you can get stuff like the uh, shrimp tempura udon and even curry udon. Wow, so many to choose from. You see, they even have cold udon here as well. Oh man, I don't even know where to begin. And then they have the rice bowls. If you don't want noodles, you're more of a rice fan, they got you covered here. And then you cannot forget about your drinks. You see sake, beer, specialty drink. So just letting you know, if you don't know what to get at this restaurant, they do have a top five udon list so that you can see what are their best sellers. And I think this is very helpful. As you can see, this is very hard work because he is rolling this and flattening this. He's doing this at least 10 times already. So yeah, it's really uh, quite a process in order to get that ideal udon shape before it boils and it's served to the customers. Ooh, I love the art of it. And that's how they cut the dough after it has been flattened. See, and then it all goes right in that hot boiling water. Oh yeah. It boils for close to 15 minutes. And then afterwards, they would rinse it in cold water so that it wouldn't cook anymore. Yeah, then afterwards, um, it's pretty much uh, ready to be garnished and served to us customers. Negi Toro rice bowl, which is fatty tuna that's chopped with green onions over rice. And it looks like there's a lot of mayo sweet sauce on top of it. And this one is agedashi tofu, which is Japanese fried tofu. Now here's something you should definitely get if you love tofu and if you get it in a Japanese restaurant, it will taste so good. Look at all that grated radish on top. Oh wow, this is a colorful masterpiece. So this is the beef tataki, which is also another best-selling appetizer. It's seared beef, so it is rare and it has their original sauce that's over it. And it does come with some tomatoes, you know, some veggies. Ooh, how pretty, look at that flower. And by the way, everything that I'm gonna show you in this video is all walking distance. And that's really the great thing about Little Tokyo is that it's so small that you can really get anywhere. Uh, they don't have a parking lot, so you're just gonna have to find some street parking on First Street or somewhere around the neighborhood and you are good to go. 
but I'm pretty sure it's worth it because you get marvelous stuff like the beef tataki. Man, look at that. Mm. Wow, so much flavor. It's so peppery too, I like it. Like big ground pepper in there. This is something you should definitely share when you come with a group here. Yeah, such good sharing item. Off to a good start. Oh wow. The outside, it's, it's perfectly crispy. How special sauce. It's almost like a tempura sauce. So maybe if you have three around the table, each get one and you're all good to go. I know this is not a sushi restaurant, but I have to get my sushi fix here. And by the way, I am eating sushi later tonight for dinner, but this is kind of like a preview of it. Oh, oh man, that's so comforting. They sure sauce this thing up. I mean, with all this mayo and eel sauce, I think me personally, I like it a little bit less saucy, but still, I mean, it does add a lot of flavor to it. I like the tuna, it's like so rich tasting. So even though this is an udon shop, it looks like they have a little bit of something for everybody. Like you got your appetizers from the tofu, to even rice bowls with tuna on top of it. And this is one of the udons that I got. If you are more into like that soy sauce, soupy type of uh, flavor, then you should get the beef udon. Yeah, so this hot udon with seasoned thinly sliced beef and green onions. And you can also add this to togarashi in order to spice it up. Broth is always an important aspect of making noodles taste great, right? Wow, oh, forget the noodles, I can just drink the broth. It definitely has that fishy taste. I mean, a very pleasant fishy taste, as well as uh, some sweetness inside, and I do taste uh, some of that kombu, like the kelp flavor. This is like a very, they got the recipe down. That's all I'll say. I, yeah, like I said, I can just sit here and just drink this. So I came to Marugami Manzo only one time, and I think that was about like seven or eight years ago. So it's been a while. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's like as perfect as udon could get. Just like I anticipated. It's thick, chewy, very smooth in your mouth. Perfect broth. Mm. Thin slices of beef. That tastes just like the beef from Yoshinoya. I love it. All right. So this is definitely a dish that I would get again. And here is their superstar udon dish. This is the sea urchin one. All right, number one bestseller. So it's hand crushed sea urchin and it does look very fresh. And it's a sea urchin cream sauce. Wow. Even topped with some ikura, salmon eggs. Anytime you put sea urchin, uni in anything, it's gonna elevate that thing like crazy. Look how creamy that thing looks. Mmm. Mmm. Having so much fun, it's making my mouth so creamy. See, I've had these sea urchin pastas before where uh, they definitely use high quality sea urchin, but the taste of it, you know, I always thought it was kind of bland, but this one, it's a very good taste. I mean, it's not like overly salty. Sea urchin is very fresh. Your mouth is gonna get dirty in this thing. Be sure to have a lot of napkins ready. Now I can see why everybody comes for this dish. It's just so magical. Get this one because it is their best seller. But then again, if you're more into the soupy one, that beef one is pretty killer. So you got two really great options here. Or better yet, why don't you just get both of them and enjoy it here. So before I go to my second lunch spot, I'm gonna be hitting up Fugetsudo, which is the oldest confectionery in Little Tokyo. It's been here since 1903. This is a piece of history that is still with us in LA. Multi-generational family operation that sells a type of Japanese desserts that is very hard to find in Los Angeles. I mean, it's becoming rarer and rarer, but of course you can find a lot of it if you were to go to the Japan. So yeah, they have everything here from candy to crackers, but I came here for the mochi, which is what you should get. The mochi ranges from $2 to $2.50, so I'm gonna get an assortment of 16. So then they also have these bread-based ones too, which you should definitely get, especially if you love, you know, bready, cakey type uh, confectionaries. 
I'm not gonna eat all 16 of this. I'm gonna take it home and enjoy it later, but at least I can try one for now. It's so chewy. Oh, that's such awesome mochi. You see, you're tasting a piece of history right here, a recipe that's been passed down for over 100 years. A lot of the stuff they make here, they do ship out to other Japanese stores and businesses all around LA. But if you wanna to come to the main source of where it all came from, here in Little Tokyo at Fugetsudo. So yeah, cannot miss this spot. All right guys, this is David right here. Boom, all right, thank you so much. Big help, big help, look out for this guy. And when you go a few stores down, back towards Central Avenue, you're gonna to get to Kaminari, which is my next lunch spot. Now this restaurant is pretty unique because it is one of very few restaurants that specializes in gyoza. So yes, this is a gyoza Japanese dumpling store and I heard it is some of the best that you can find in all of LA. Let's check it out. The menu here is so simple, guys. This is what I like about this place. So in terms of the fillers, this is the different proteins that you can get. And then you can get your gyoza pan fried, deep fried or boiled with soup. And then if you want to pair it with the bento box, you could do that for a complete meal. See, pretty easy, huh? They serve Utsunomiya gyoza. And this is a kind of like a specialty gyoza that comes out of that city. And I didn't know this, but apparently there are hundreds of these gyoza shops, especially if you go to Utsunomiya. Wow, looks like it's done. Okay. And yes, they have the deep fried one too. Oh yeah, deep fried gyoza. Can't go wrong with that. You see, they even have the boil too. So this one is with the shrimp. What did I tell you? I got all three of their different ways of making gyoza. So this one is the sui, soup gyoza. And let me tell you, you're not gonna find this in too many places in LA. So we got five pieces of boiled gyoza with their clear pork soup, some green onion toppings served with homemade chili oil on the side. And then over here, this is their age, which is deep fried, six pieces of deep fried gyoza served with one choice of sauce on the side. And then down here, I've seen this many times before, the yaki, which is pan fried dumpling. So six pieces of pan fried gyoza. So just letting you know that all of these sauces are 65 cents if you decide to get additional sauces beside what they provide for you. But I'm gonna go through all of them because I wanted to try all of them. So we got ponzu, homemade chili oil, teriyaki, garlic aioli, and then going down here, yuzu koshu, cilantro chili, which I heard is super good, and then the sweet chili, and sriracha mayo, okay. Mmm, wow. Kinda has a little gingery flavor and Mmm, it's just a little oily too, but that oil adds a lot of flavor to it. I mean, I've had soup dumplings before, but I don't know if I've ever had it like in a Japanese restaurant like this. So that one is the shrimp. Usually when I eat gyoza, I, I have it with the pork, but shrimp filling is really good too. You could get it with shrimp, you could get it with chicken, you could get it with pork. And the Utsunomiya gyoza, I heard that it uses particular vegetables in it, like onion and leek. So the vegetables is one of the things that makes it different. Now the pork filling is really the traditional way to go. Even in Utsunomiya, you're not really gonna find the chicken and shrimp there. Not in too many places. So if you don't know what else to get and you really wanna be like Japanese food purist, just stick with the pork. That is so delicious. Pan fried so beautifully on top. It's like a beautiful crispiness on top. It's like really the right way to make pork gyoza. Perfect amount of fillings. Vegetable and pork ratio is so good inside. So it's a very popular takeout spot. So you don't have to dine in if you don't want. I mean, in fact, a lot of people take the food, take it to go, you know, it makes for a really good lunch. Mmm. The flavor is pretty intense. I mean, it's like a typical sweet chili sauce, but you know, sweet chili goes good with anything. And that's not all folks. You also have the pento boxes, which are so popular here, especially the pork pento. Oh, look at that picture of that pig. How cute, huh? See, look at that. It's like a pento box. You got some rice, you got the adamami, you got some spring rolls. And then this is the pan fried dumplings, which is pork, obviously. 
And then the bottom, ooh, look at that. We got some spaghetti. Okay, some of that international influence. And then right here, we got some potatoes. I mean, I've had gyoza before in a pento box, but it was never like the highlight item. You know what I'm saying? It was always like the teriyaki chicken or something like that. But hey, if they make it really good, I'm very open-minded. I mean, who doesn't like spring rolls, right? I mean, I don't eat them that often, but I enjoy it. Tastes great. I'll take it if it comes with the pento box. I think that's the first time I've ever tried sriracha mayo with pan-fried gyozas. But this one I did not expect, the potatoes. I love potatoes, so I'm so happy. Now I feel like I'm in an American breakfast restaurant. Oh yeah, just gotta have my eggs and bacon on the side. I'm good to go. It's like a sweet spaghetti sauce. You're actually gonna find spaghetti used in uh, Japanese cuisine. It's one of the more modern uh, Western influences in Japanese cuisine. But then again, you're gonna find it in Korean cuisine too because a lot of Asian countries have adapted stuff like potato and cheese and spaghetti. So my recommendation is if you want to eat here and you wanna get a complete meal, or if you wanna take it to go, get the bento box. Before I get out of here, I wanna give a shout out to Atsuko. She's the manager here at Kaminari. So when you come in here, uh, tell her and the staff that you saw this episode and she's gonna hook you up with 10% off, right? Yes, 10% yes. discount till mm -hmm. the end of the year, end mm -hmm. of this year. That's right, till December 31st, 2023. So get here quickly. Yes. And one of the places you absolutely need to visit if you are in Little Tokyo is the Japanese Village Plaza. I mean, this is a given. Everybody pretty much comes here because you got these lanterns, you got these beautiful Japanese architecture that looks like something out of Japan. And plus you got a lot of great restaurants, gift shops, dessert shops. I mean, there's really too much to eat around Little Tokyo that it's impossible for one video to do it justice. But everything that I'm showing you in this video is only a small sample of all the great foods and great sights that you can see here in Little Tokyo, downtown LA. So now it is dinner time. So the last restaurant I'm gonna be heading to is this one behind me. It's in the Miyako Hotel, upstairs on the second floor called Tamon Sushi. This is really a hidden gem sushi restaurant because it's really easy to miss when you're driving on First Street. But they have some of the best traditional sushi that you can find in LA. It's owned by the same group as Daikokuya and I heard it's pretty fabulous, especially if you want kind of like that fine dining type of sushi. So let's check it out. So like I said, it's on the second floor of the Miyako Hotel. It's been here for about 15 years. And what makes this restaurant pretty rocking is that you get a beautiful view of First Street when you are dining. And it's especially good at nighttime where it has like a very romantic vibe. But they do open for lunch as well. So they have a lunch menu, you know, suitable for all occasions. There are a few things that this restaurant is known for. One of them is the Chirashi box. In fact, I think this is actually the best seller here, the Tamon Chirashi box, which is the uh, sashimi over sushi rice. And then you should also consider the nigiri set, which is also very popular. It comes in different sizes from $25 to $55. And if you happen to be a steak lover, they do have stuff like New York steak, ribeye, pork chop, as well as these wonderful fish dishes. Ooh, this is also worth mentioning. They have a daily omakase. So for $90 a person, you can get all this. This is pretty reasonably priced because omakases can be very expensive in LA. I know that for sure. It gets even better, guys, because there's also a private tatami room where you take your shoes off and then you can sit like on the floor, very traditional Japanese style. I definitely recommend reservations for this. This is actually pretty nice, I can tell. I'm gonna have a pretty fun time here. Oh, yeah, I never knew that first street looked so good from up here. See all the traffic. So this is the first one that came out. This is the Tamon Pento, a specialty box. So if you like Pento boxes, you should definitely get this one. And this looks very traditional Japanese. You see, you got 
the uh, broiled fish sea bass along with some mixed tempura and then some simmered vegetables. Yeah, very Japanese. And then you even have some sashimi right there. Um, they got some tuna, salmon, yellowtail, and then even some white rice. This is their specialty. I'm so excited to try this one. I've been wanting to try this. The Tamon Chirashi box. So this is the chef choice fresh cut fish of the day. And it comes with miso soup on the side, which is that right there. But I'm just so glad to be eating this. It's so colorful. I mean, look at everything you got in here. It's like a treasure chest of fresh fish of the day. Also colorful. I haven't had a chirashi in a long time, so I'm very excited to try this. It's like, I don't even know where to begin. So crunchy. I love it. But then this yellowtail is something that I always feel is always so good with any sushi meal. Mm. And see, one of the things you're going to notice about the food here is that it's not like those modern sushi restaurants where you're gonna have so many creative rolls and you know all this innovative sushi this is really old school purist sushi we're talking about here almost like something out of japan i think this is the blue crab like what they would put in those blue crab rolls oh definitely wow that is so good i love that flavor have you guys had blue crab before if you haven't, you should try it, especially in a hand roll. It's like the best thing ever. Yeah, so, so far I'm really enjoying the chirashi. Yep, they were right, this is pretty awesome stuff. You see they have every kind of fish here, even the octopus. Mm-hmm, mm. And that's one of the things I love about Japanese food is just the amount of care they take into making the recipes as well as designing the food on the plate. I mean, I heard it was pretty good when I came here, but man, you got to experience it for yourself. It's so rich tasting. I am ending on such a high note today. Melts in your mouth. Oh, that is so, that's so delicious. It's like butter in your mouth. Mm. If you want something where you can get a little bit of everything, like you can get the fried stuff, tempura, you can get the raw stuff like the sashimi, you can even get some veggies right here, like the simmered veggies and the fish. This is perfect. It's like you got everything here. You're all set, man. Oh yeah, look at this pretty big one. So this is their Tamon Sushi Nigiri set. It comes with 12 pieces of Nigiri Sushi, plus you get tuna rolls right there oh they got everything from tuna to toro salmon yellowtail spanish mackerel shrimp uh salmon eggs uni everything look at these tuna rolls i haven't had tuna rolls like this in a long time i used to see tuna rolls all the time when i was much younger brings back a lot of memories it's like very simple because you got the rice the seaweed and the tuna it's so good. This one is, uh, I think the giant scallop. Yes. Mm. See, I'm really into sushi like this, especially like the uni right there. Oh yeah, gotta get my uni fix. Wow, that uni melts in your mouth. They got like every one of my favorite sushi here, like the salmon as well. Oh yeah. And by the way, you can order these a la carte as well. They have a regular sushi menu. We can get uh, two pieces, just like any other sushi restaurant at the bar, but everybody gets the nigiri set. So I think you should too. All right, and this is the Angus ribeye steak, 12 ounce for $45. And it does come with some rice as well as some salad. And yes, it comes with the dressing, the sauce that goes over it. Oh yeah, woo, oh. -ho. So I got mine medium rare, which I think is the perfect way to eat it. I didn't think I was gonna be eating steak today. I mean, if I was out probably in Beverly Hills or Santa Monica or something like that, but here in Little Tokyo, if you love steak, yeah, you can get your steak here. Oh yeah, your steak fix. Mm. 
very tender. Ooh, it's kind of like a sweet sauce. Oh, <laughs> look at that, it even comes with these fries too. Mmm, so crispy and so much, uh, so much potato in there. It almost feels like eating potato wedge fries. But then there's also the veggies too. Oh, this is so fun. If you're thinking about getting a steak, you love steak, yeah, you should get it because this is really, like I said, one of the most popular items at this restaurant. A lot of people come just for this one. And this one is the nabi yaki. It's udon underneath. And look at that tempura on top of it. I See that shrimp? It's so huge. Oh, it smells so good. And it comes with some Japanese pickles too. It's a purple color. Man, very nice. I had udon earlier. I guess since I'm eating udon very last, that means my meal is pretty much over, right? I mean, in Japan, that's the way it's supposed to be. Mmm, still pretty good. I mean, it's been sitting for just a little while, but it has really good flavor. I mean, not as spectacular as that one across the street, but still, oh, delicious. And did I tell you, look at the shrimp tempura. Woo, that's so big. It's like a monster piece right there. So if you eat all the sushi and you're still in the mood for some noodles, they got it here as well. And guys, they do have dessert here too, so don't leave without trying the chocolate mousse, which is for the chocolate lovers, but then they also have the matcha tiramisu. You heard that right, green tea tiramisu. If you are coming here to Little Tokyo for the first time, or perhaps you've been here many times before, but you're just looking for some other great places to eat at, so remember that. You got your udon place, Marugami Manzo, you got Fugetsudo, you got Kaminari, and then you have this awesome sushi restaurant, Tamon, at the Miyako Hotel. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this episode, guys. You know what to do. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next food adventure.